My name is Kathy Baumgartner Hedrick, and Steve Philippi and I undertook a very large project this year of the 250th anniversary of Palmyra. We have decided to do some oral histories of um, people who lived, have lived in Palmyra. Most of them are over the age of 80 or 85, and we asked them to tell us their story about Palmyra so that we could put together a DVD that you're going to watch now that has the stories of Palmyra based on the people who have lived here. We hope you enjoy it. We've had a fun time doing it, and we think you'll learn a lot about Palmyra and the history of Palmyra through the stories of Palmyra. My name is June Hershey. Uh, I was born in June the 20th, 1920, so I'm 90 years old. And uh, I lived on North Railroad Street practically all my life. <laughs> Before, we were, you were telling me something about the politics of Palmyra. Let's yeah, talk about it, that. It, when, when I was growing up, uh, there were very few Democrats in Palmyra. And if, uh, there were a few, but, but not very many. And after, I know it was after presidential elections, the party that won, they would have an, after the election results were announced, they would have an impromptu, uh, like a torchlight parade through the town, just a group of people, <laughs> and all together, no bands or anything like that, just a group of people to, uh, to kind of serenade their winning. And after uh, uh, Roosevelt won in 1932, there was an Al Yeiser who was a Democrat and had a barber shop on Railroad Street and he organized a group, it was a small group of Democrats who marched through the town to announce their victory. When I talked with you before, you were telling me about growing up on Railroad Street. You were talking about some of the businesses that were around oh, your home. Yes. Well, down at the railroad where the Palmer Nursing Home, mm -hmm. there was an Angles, Angles. An Angles uh, general store. They had groceries and they had dry goods. And they'd have fabric and they also, you know, sold clothing. Uh, I don't know if they sold, you know, like dresses, and, but I believe they had men's trousers and things like that. No meat. They didn't have meat because refrigeration wasn't any good. There was a meat market where the bicycle shop is now on Railroad Street. Bones. Did you know Thelma uh, Spar? Yes, yes. Her father, oh, okay. Jake Ball, had a meat market there. Well, he had groceries too. Oh. Uh, and the, the Things were packaged. It was bulk. And crackers, they had to weigh. Uh, soup beans, okay. dried lima beans, they weighed them from a barrel. Well, when you were growing up in Palmyra, you went to those small stores. Yes. You didn't have supermarkets. No, no. And there was an American store. Well, I guess Frank owns that building now. Frank. Frank mm -hmm. and right on the corner. And it's an apartment now, but uh, at the alley. Okay, I know what you mean. Yeah, right there at the and alley. And that was a what kind of store? American store. And what does that mean? What did they oh, sell? That's a grocery store. Oh, okay. It, it's Acme now, but it was a very. Oh, it started store. American and now it's Acme. Acme. Okay. Yeah, and one of the men who worked for him told me not to a uh, couple years ago that they had beans, soup beans, in, you know, in a, in a barrel uh -huh. to weigh out bulk. And they also kept a cat to, to keep the, uh, the mice down. And the cat did it. Uh, would get in the barrel. Got, it got, it did his business on top of the beans. Oh, no. And the manager said, just scoop the top off. Yeah, he wasn't going to waste any of those beans. <laughs> no. Oh, no. So, and there was an A&P on the other side of the street at the next alley. I remember the A&P. Across the street from where I lived 
there was a Mr. Geiger had a plumbing, uh, plumbing and heating sh store shop over there. Mary Longenegger. I remember that name. Yeah, she would worked up at the, the Valley Trust Bank. Uh, well, it was still the Valley Trust Bank. Yeah, that's changed <laughs> through the years, hasn't it? And yeah, and, the banks. And, and years ago, that building housed the bank. And the next was uh, Ober's, Ober's Hardware, Hardware Store, okay. and then Ferry's, okay. that was a general store also, and uh, the AAA, That's right. and McCune's Drugstore, Drug store. and uh, right across from the Valley Trust. Yeah, there was trust. a species restaurant there. Well, now was that the same space, was it the same family as the Grocery store yes. that, oh really, yes. it was the same, the same family? same family. Okay. Uh-huh. That it was all, the, and they had an ad of a heavy man and a tall, thin man, and the heavy man said, I eat in species, and the other one said, I don't. <laughs> That's funny. That was yeah. their advertisement. That was yeah. their advertisement. But nobody went, nobody went out to eat in those days. They didn't have the money for that. Oh, and down the street, oh, down uh, from us on Railroad Street, uh, north of Broad, it would have been the third, the third house going north on the east side. There was a Dr. Bayshore. I remember hearing that name. Yeah, okay. and he was quite a character. He he was in World War One. And, um, was he a family doctor? Yes. Okay. Right. 50 cents and you got medicine. And he gave the kids what we call red medicine. We thought it cured everything. Uh, could have been just sugar water, I don't know. But we thought it cured everything. And he was great for cod liver oil and the emulsion type. Mm. We took that as kids. You take that every day? Every I day. I know, my, my mother said the same thing she had to take. Every, every day. Well, thank you again for talking with us. We're we really welcome. appreciate this. <laughs> we hope that the, the um, information about Palmyra continues by this, vi this video so that we can continue um, yeah. well, telling the story of Palmyra through well, what you're telling us. Well, that's it.